my name is Christian Bengtsson and I'm a business PhD student at Biokinetics in collaboration with SLU and I spend 80% of my time at my PhD studies and 20% uh, at R&D at Biokinetics and my PhD studies is about uh, Tinder for cows where we look at how we better can match females and bull uh, with um, genomic information. And then the 20% time at R&D, uh, there is one part, uh, this Yentor project. You can take the next one. So this is the application text for 5.4, uh, where the task leader is Ors University. And we have partners from Ireland and France. So I highlighted some words that we see as important. So we should do something transgenerational. It should include resilience, efficiency. It should be population wide. And we should look in several key production environments. And all these we aim to transform into what will be presented on the following slides. Uh, next one, please. So our proposed aim is that we want to study the genetic effect of resilience uh, with two different breeding goals in two different environments using Adam. Uh, next slide, please. And what is then Adam? Uh, it's a simulation program that models selective breeding schemes for animals using stochastic simulations. And it traces genetic changes in the population under different selective breeding schemes. Uh, next one, please. So to simulate an Adam, we need some input parameters and we need good input parameters. And we also needed to define what is resilience. At least for me, the term uh, was new. So we needed to define that. So we made a little literature review to see what has been done. Uh, next one, please. And we found this study, uh, Schaeffer et al. 2018, which illustrated with some nice picture, what is high resilience and what is low resilience. And to the left, you can see high resilience. And you can see, if you look at A, you can see that little ball as an animal. And you can see that that animal is harder to interrupt compared to B, which more easily falls off the cliff. And also, if you look at resilience over time in C and D, um, you want the animal to be able to recover uh, quickly. So C, recover faster uh, than D. And also in E and F, um, you want little variation, for example, over uh, the lactation curve. And in G and H, um, it illustrates the correlations between different subsystems. Um, so if there is high correlation like in H between a subsystem, then there is low systematic resilience. So this really helped us to understand the correlation structure for Adam. Because um, if, for example, we have problems um, in one system, for example, um, health, then there is also more likely to be problems uh, with regard to reproduction and so on. So it helped us to understand uh, how and how we will interpret our result later on. Uh, so next one, please. And then we looked into the dairy cattle world and we found a study that looked into uh, resilience and with a little bit more genetic uh, background uh, from Pope 2019. And um, her study um, or her definition of resilience uh, was the ability of a cow to cope with environmental disturbances such as pathogens and heat waves. And she calculated some resilience indicators uh, from the daily deviation from lactation curve. And the best indicator she found was this Ellen bar uh, with a heritability of 0.20, 0.24. And she also found that this Ellen bar was genetically associated with better other health, uh, better longevity, less ketosis, higher fertility, higher body condition score, and great dry matter intake. So this 
gave us a hint, okay, those traits are important uh, and those traits maybe we should include in the Arnhem simulations. Uh, next one, please. And then together with other work packages and in our work packages, we have discussed a lot about longevity. And we also seen great presentation uh, today uh, regarding the topic. So longevity is some kind of way we should include. And maybe residual longevity could be the answer. And that would then be longevity corrected for all other traits in the breeding goal, leaving us with a trait being dependent on the other traits in the breeding goal compared to maybe the more commonly used in Yanto countries functional longevity, which is, is suggested for within herd production, but more describes the cow's ability to avoid involuntary culling. Uh, next one, please. And this has left us with the following traits in pipeline. And I should say that in Adam, the maximum number of traits is six. So we are already beyond that. Um, so we might have to reduce the number of traits uh, if Adam doesn't run as we should. Uh, but we plan to include uh, milk production, energy corrected milk, um, body condition score. And we also want to include beef production. Body condition score we have seen is important for resilience, um, but we also want beef to cover um, the beef part uh, of the application. So we'll see how we do, but they are of course related in some kind of way. Then we want to look at feed efficiency, uh, roughest consumptions. Uh, we want to look at fertility and health, where we aim to look at clinical mastitis as a binary trait. And then we have the resilience twist with the residual longevity and the Lenvada from the Popeye study. Next one, please. So when you're simulating your Adam, you need good inputs, as I said, and we need to understand and know the correlation between different traits and especially the genetic correlations. So here I illustrated that with some arrows. So green arrows are correlations that we know from, for example, uh, the Popeye study. So we know the correlation between the indicators towards the production and also towards health, fertility and dry matter intake. At the same time, the indicators, we don't really know um, yeah, those correlations towards the true or the actual resilience. So here we need to do some sensitivity analysis. And we are also collaborating with work package C6, which has um, a program called Aqual. Uh, you can take the next one. And Aqual is a dynamic model from birth to death. And the goal is that Aqual can be used to improve our understanding of known and unknown correlations for Adam. And then when we are finished simulating and we hopefully improved um, uh, the genetic parts in the population, then that can be inputted in Aqual um, to improve and to better understand their model. So it's really a two-way collaboration here. Next one, please. And then with regard to the different environments we aim to look at. Uh, so we want environments that cover all Yantor uh, countries. And we went for the two most extreme. So we want to go for an intensive production with indoor year round calving, high input, high output, where maybe the breeding goal is more focused towards high production. And then we want to look at a more extensive production, uh, a grazing system, seasonal calving. So it's important that all cows calf at the same time. So in the breeding goal uh, context, there's more focus towards fertility and roughage consumption. Uh, next one. Then we aim to include two breeds. Uh, we aim to go for the Holstein in a more mountainous region cattle like the Montbelliard. And they will of course have different genetic starting levels. So maybe the Holstein cattle is more towards the intensive production right now. And uh, Montpellier is more towards uh, the grazing system. 
um, as it is today. And we will see what we can do with those different starting levels. And we want to investigate uh, those interesting breed slash genotype environment interactions. Uh, next one, please. With regard to the standard, uh, with uh, regard to the genomic breeding scheme, uh, we aim to go for a standard um, large population breeding scheme uh, that others have found optimal in Adam with regard, for example, inbreeding and so on. So we aim to go for a breeding nucleus with around 20,000 cows, where 2,000 bulls uh, are genomic tested a year, and 100 of them selected. And the same on the female side, we test 2,200 of them are selected for embryo transfer. And they produce around six offspring per donor. And the accuracies will, of course, vary depending on which trait we're looking at, but on a breeding goal basis, 0.6, 0.7. So we don't want to vary this too much because we think we will have too much in errors anyways. And finally, the schedule ahead. Um, so before summer, we will continue to describe our breeding schemes and we're happy to receive input uh, after today, uh, how we can improve it or if someone else have good input that we can use for Adam. And then after summer, um, we will have the input from a qual. Uh, we will set up Adam and start the simulation. And that was it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Christian.